<laughs> Yo, forgive me how I looked. I, I just woke up. <coughs> oh, am I dying? I swear I don't have corona. And, and if I have corona, I'm pretty sure it's not contagious through YouTube videos. So you are safe. Anyways, I'm going to announce a new giveaway. But before we're going to do that, obviously I still need to choose a winner for previous competition. Now, I didn't think this true, but I'm going to go do some browsing and see what I find. YouTube giveaway picker. This sounds good. Oh, so I need a link. Let me get a link. All right, let's see who won. Bloop. Wait, where's the winner? Where's the winner? Come on. Oh, <laughs> I need to press here. Some drum roll. And the winner is Jess the Wolf. I want to win the using little magic setup like yours. Oh, that's awesome. It's the best setup, I promise you. So I'm going to contact you through Instagram or I'll comment on your comment. And congrats, congrats. If you didn't win, don't cry. Um, I'm going to do a new giveaway right now because the cubicle is super awesome and they give me some gift cards for my thousand subscribers. I've got two gift cards of $10 and one of $20. For the ones of $10, all you have to do is subscribe again and like the video because previous time I didn't tell you to like the video and somehow I got 400 comments, which is just, that's just awesome. And I only got about 100 likes. So how does that happen, right? I thought it was more difficult to get comments and likes so like the video subscribe and just comment something like done or anything like that and for the 20 dollar gift card oh yeah all you have to do is find the most creative way you can share my channel just be creative you can make a drawing you can make an instagram post you can do anything just find a creative way to share my channel do that and comment on my channel what you did and make sure you have some proof as well it can be just your username or a link or anything i will choose my top three favorites from the comments i'll pick a random winner from those three so that's about it let's get to the video we did it 1000 subscribers <laughs> This is awesome. I can't tell y'all how much I appreciate all of the support you guys have been giving me. It, is, it has been so awesome. Especially the last 100 subscribers. Let me take this off. I can't see anything. I think the last 100 subscribers didn't even take a week. Really, thank you. We're just getting started. Huge announcement at 10,000 subs. I'm not kidding. There's something awesome I want to do when we reach... 10,000 subscribers. Let's see how fast we can get there, right? Anyways, I asked you on my previous video and on Instagram for some questions. Yes, we're doing a Q&A. Very original, right? So first one from Looney Cubes. Why did you start a YouTube channel and how long have you been cubing? So this is something that a lot of people ask me, like how I started my YouTube channel. And it's really difficult to answer because I wanted to start a YouTube channel like so long ago. I just never got to it. I think the first time that I thought about starting a YouTube channel was back in 2017 or so. Too bad. I should have started, right? However, there is one thing though that really convinced me to start my YouTube channel. Uh, previous year, I studied at the Apple Developer Academy in Italy. And the main focus of that year was to develop apps. But we also had a lot of chances to practice our speaking and presentation skills and stuff like that. And there was this one moment when they were looking for people who voluntarily wanted to do a presentation about something creative. I think that was the only requirement that it needed to be creative. I, I don't really recall, to be honest. So I volunteered to do the presentation about cubing and somehow they chose me to do the presentation for the whole academy. And I remember that I was so nervous. I solved some cubes on stage and they were so horrible because of the nerves. But they didn't know, obviously. They all thought it was crazy fast. However, I still remember this one person coming up to me after the presentation. And he said something in the lines of, I've seen a lot of videos about people solving Rubik's cubes crazy fast. And I never really understood why they would spend so much time doing that. But the way you talked about it made it sound so much fun. And that day, I really told myself that I had to make this YouTube channel with exactly that goal in mind to show how much fun cubing can be. So when I got back home in Belgium, I made my first video, the 2000 Souls video. It's a really long story, but I really believe that without that presentation and without that guy coming up to me, I don't think I would have started my channel. So makes you think, right? Anyway, second question. Do you have any tips on how to grow your channel because you have grown so much? It's crazy how many people ask me for tips on how to create videos or 
how to grow your YouTube channel when I just feel like I'm still beginning and learning myself. I only have 20 videos right now. So it would be really naive of me to just be saying, do this and then do that. Because in reality, I'm just doing what feels right at the moment. But I will answer this in general though. The most important thing is to just get started. Like, I wish I did that a long time ago. Don't try to get everything perfect from the start, because it won't be. And secondly, try to find your own style and be different. Try to stand out. There's so much cubing content online right now, and it will be super difficult to stand out if you're just going to create more tutorials or cubing compilations. It might still be doable to get big just from reviews and tutorials, but you will need something that makes you stand out. In the same way that Cube Soul Hero stands out with his editing, his editing is really good and that's how he stands out. But you need to know that even he only had a thousand subscribers after 100 videos, so... And lastly, uh, be part of the community. If you're there to help people, they will notice that and come to your channel. Don't be afraid of hate, that's something else I'll add to the list. The community is really nice, like most of them at least. So yeah, just start, just start, do it. How did you get sponsored so fast after beginning? Oh yeah, this question, like so many people ask me all the time, like how did you get sponsored so fast? So let me tell you how it went actually. Jules from the cubicle texted me first around the end of December when I only had around 300 subscribers and 10 videos. So first I couldn't believe my eyes obviously. This company I looked up to from the day that I started cubing contacted me to sponsor me and, and so fast, that's just mind blowing to me. And the reason they contacted me might actually really surprise you. I have no clue. Really, I don't know. You'll have to ask them, I guess. At first I thought maybe it was just luck. But a few days after that, the Speedcube shop messaged me as well. So I must be doing something right, I guess. I don't know. I wish I could answer that. Or oh, you tell me. Oh, that's a really good idea. Here's my question to you. Why are you subscribed to me? And do you regret it already? <laughs> How much toilet paper do you have in stock? And what Cuban YouTuber do you watch the most? Uh, first the toilet paper. I think I have enough for about four days. Yeah, I think four days is accurate. And uh, recently I watched a lot of Jaden McNeil because his tips are so good. I think he's one of the most, if not the most knowledgeable cuber out there. I also watch Brody the Cuber a lot because I think his videos are really good. And Cubing Encoded, I kind of like his new stuff. I don't really know why, but I watch it. And The Cubicle, of course, the best channel out there by far. By the way, use discount code QPAT on thecubicle.com to get 5% of your order. I'm telling you, 5%, that's a lot. By the way, I watch way more channels than just those guys, but I think I watch all the big channels out there, so I don't know, I watch all of them. Can you show your cubing collection? Yeah, a lot of people ask this as well. Um, well, my cubing collection is way less exciting than you might think. So I will just show my mains right now on my main shelf. It looks pretty dope, right? You might have already seen it on Instagram. I posted a picture over there, but I think it looks really good. So I'm not going to go in detail, but Volk 2 M, really good. You see Little Magic, uh, you've probably already seen this one. If you want to see what's so special about this one, watch the video. Wukwe 4x4 is magnetized by the cubicle. It used to be a really good cube, but there's way better cubes out there right now. So I'm kind of waiting for a new cube to be released and replace this one. MGC, MGC. I don't have a 7x7 because I don't practice big cubes. And I just want to say, rest in peace, little soldier. We won't forget you. What is your favorite cube you've ever had? Oh, that's a great question. I think the cube that I made for the longest time was the Moyu Weilong GDS2. And I magnetized that one myself because the factory magnetized version wasn't out yet. And I loved it so much. I don't think I will ever have a cube that fitted my turning style as well as that cube. However, I really don't like the color scheme right now. But I really love that cube. I lost it. What was your first speed cube? When you ask this, um, I went looking for the cube. I didn't find it. I think I lost that one as well. But it was this white Waylon, the first Waylon before the GTS existed. I don't remember if it was the version one or the version two. I will show you a picture. Oh, when I looked at the picture, I felt so nostalgic. Like it's only like a few years ago, but just the memories of that cube. Because I was using this Rubik's Cube brand for a long time and suddenly you have, you have this good cube. I'll never forget the feeling. It was awesome. Do you have a girlfriend? Nope. <laughs> yes, I have a girlfriend and I love her very much. If you want me to do a video with her, just let me know because she would love that. Uh, try to solve a 3x3 three three while spinning on a chair very fast or just spin on the ground and solve. Finally, someone with a challenge. Why did no one give me a challenge? Yes, let me try. Oh. 
I'm fine. Ugh. I'm fine. <sighs> no, I cannot. <laughs> oh, let me take a sip of water. Uh. Anyways, what is the most important thing that newer cubers often overlook when starting the hobby? This is this is an awesome question, actually. I think I'm going to make a video with exactly that title. Um, I think the most important thing that people overlook when starting is actually understanding the cube. Because I see a lot of people that just start out and using all these algorithms for every pair and stuff like that. And I think um, those are good eventually, but you shouldn't focus on that when you start. You should focus on really understanding what you're doing. Do you consider cucumbers as a snack? <laughs> Uh, she talks about this. No, I'm not the... Man, you're a f***ing idiot. You have to be insane to think a cucumber is a snack. Come on. Uh, why do a Road to World Record series on 2x2? Why not any other event? Uh, good question. Because I knew I wanted to get good at 2x2 eventually. Uh, the puzzles I want to get good at are 2x2, 3x3, 4x4, one-handed and blind. Like, I want to be really good at those five things. And I thought 2x2 would fit me really well, because I thought it was about turning fast and learning a lot, lot of algorithms. I thought at least, because it turns out that uh, using your inspection time to plan out your whole solve is way more important than any of those things. But yeah, that's why I started, because I wanted to get good at it eventually, and I thought it would really fit me, but it still does, obviously. I, I enjoy doing it. Why call it Road to World Record? But it seems as though you're actually going for the national record. What are you talking about? Of of course I'm going for the world record, duh. I just need to break the national record first. Come on, watch me. I'll, I'll break it. Do you plan on learning LEG1 and TCLL plus and TCLL minus? No, but I didn't plan to learn EG2 either and I'm learning it right now. So I'm saying no, but who knows? What do you think about cubing at home and online competitions? I think it's really awesome that they're doing that. I mean, in times where all the competitions are cancelled, uh, still creating opportunities to bring the community together, I think that's an amazing thing to do. Uh, I should have registered, but I think I was about a minute too late, so yeah. I am a bit skeptical though about uh, inserting the times, because how are you going to prevent all these kids to just lie about their times? But I guess we'll find out how that went pretty soon. Uh, will you go to Euros? If it doesn't get cancelled, of course. I would love to. I haven't registered yet and the register fee is going up. I think it's 70 bucks right now, which is a lot. But I will come if it still continues. Yes, I will go. It's just in the Netherlands and I live in Belgium. It's super close. I have to go. Um, how was your first competition? I'm going to make another video about that because the first competition you see on my WCA profile is not really my first competition. I will tell you that much. If you ever see me upload a video called my first competition, you better watch that one because... <laughs> would you ever come to a US comp? I'd love to meet you. I would love to. Cubicle, do you hear that? I want to go to America. But now is a really bad time though with the Corona stuff going on. There is no competitions, right? So after Corona, I'm going after Corona. Uh, can I have a hug? After Corona, <laughs> will you answer this question? Uh, give a shout out to Brazil. Hola Brasil, como você está? That's how far my Portuguese goes, so... Rate it, rate it in the comments. Uh, is English your first language? And if not, what is? I know you wouldn't say that it isn't, but yeah, English is not my first language. My first language is Dutch. Actually, it's Flemish, because I'm from Belgium. Dutch is from the Netherlands, and I'm from Belgium, and they speak Flemish. Flemish sounds a bit different than Dutch, but it's almost the same, so... So I'm going to do one more question, but once again, I'm really sorry if I didn't answer your question. Um, just keep it for the next Q&A. Next Q&A at 5k, I promise you. 5k, let's see how fast we can get there. So last question. Uh, what's your favorite aspect of cubing? The thing I like most about cubing is that it doesn't have an end. Like, you don't have an end goal. You can always learn new things. You can always get faster. And you spend all this time practicing and learning new things to get better at it. And you can apply all that skill and knowledge on, on this tiny cube, which you can always bring with you. I don't know, that's just something really satisfying to me that for normal people, this would, would just be a toy. But it becomes so much more once you actually really spend some time learning stuff it, it, it becomes something else entirely however what recently became my favorite aspect of cubing is not that it has nothing to do with the cube it is actually you guys thank you